going to cover day one of two of the Mongols. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about where the Mongols are from. We're going to talk about the geography of the land of the Mongols. We're going to talk about the most famous Mongol. And we're also going to talk about why the Mongols were important to China. Let's start with where the Mongols are from. The Mongols are from an area of Asia called Mongolia. That is where the name Mongols comes from. They are from an area in Central Asia, north of China, called Mongolia. Mongols were nomads, which are people who moved from place to place trying to find food and shelter. They were from loosely formed clans or tribes that stuck together. The geography of the Mongols, Mongolia, North Mongolia was primarily basins and lakes. East Mongolia was the Gobi Desert. West Mongolia was primarily mountains. And South Mongolia was fertile land. Now that we've talked about the geography and where the Mongols are from, let's talk about the most famous Mongol. His name is Genghis Khan. His real name, his born name, was Timujin. He was born into a warlock Mongolia. When he was born, uh, the different tribes were battling it out for land supremacy. Most of his family died in either battles or were assassinated within their own tribe. Khan's wife ends up being kidnapped by a rival tribe. Right after this happened, he went on a conquest of entire Mongolia, taking over smaller tribes, taking over smaller provinces, trying to find his wife, trying to take over the rival tribe, trying to uh, take no prisoners. He went after everybody. Uh, in 1206, he became the name Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan translated into English or translated Simply translated means universal ruler. The great, he creates a new government and he takes down all tribes who are not loyal to him. So if you're a tribe and you do not want to be loyal to Genghis Khan, he takes you out. He does not take any prisoners. He does not give any excuses. He don't want any excuses. If you're not going to be loyal to him, he don't have no reason to keep you around. So that's how Genghis Khan gets his power. He basically takes over the smaller groups that are not on his side. We're going to wrap up today with Khan expands his empire and the Mongols as leaders. Khan wants to be leader of all of Asia. He goes on to attack the Xin Dynasty in China in 1211, then areas west of Mongolia. He goes into India. He goes into India and into what is the Middle East as well. Then he moves on to Central Asia in 1225. So he eventually, Genghis Khan eventually conquers this whole area right here. Almost all the way to the Caspian Sea. All the way over here. The Mongols as leaders. In 1260, the Mongols divide their empire into four regions called Khanates. A descendant of Genghis ruled each region, almost like governors to states. Each one of Genghis's uh, relatives ruled each one of the regions. As Mongols got more powerful, they began to destroy the areas and the beliefs. So if they weren't on your side, then they would destroy you. They were fierce against any opposition. If you tried to rebel against the Mongols, they would take you down. Now, if you did not try to rebel against them, then they would allow you to, they wouldn't make you take their beliefs, okay? They would not make you take their beliefs. You could keep some of your beliefs, um, as long as you did not rebel. If you rebelled, they would take you out. So, in today's lesson, we have talked about who Genghis Khan was, we talked about where the Mongols were from, we have talked about that Genghis Khan expands his empire into China and across what is the Middle East, we talk about the Mongols as leaders. Tomorrow we will spend on what happens after Genghis dies and what happens to the Mongols. This ends day one of the Mongol lesson.